What is civil law? Civil law is a body of rules that defines and protects the private rights of citizens, offer legal remedies that may be sought in a dispute, and covers areas of laws such as contract, torts, property, and family law. Civil law is derived from the laws of ancient Rome, which is used doctrines to develop a code that determine how legal issues would be decided. Code provides in its chapter on human relations that every person must, in the exercise of his rights and in the performance of his duties, act with justice, give everyone his due and observe honesty and good faith. Every person who, contrary to law, willfully or neglectantly causes damage to another shall and dignify the latter for the same. On the other hand, any person who willfully causes loss or injury to another in a manner that is contrary to morals, good customs, or public policy shall compensate the latter for the damages. Essentially, any right exercises or duty for fund must be in a manner that comforts with standards laid down by the law. This one becomes liable for damages even if the act that is not illegal per se. What is co-ownership? There is a co-ownership whenever the ownership of an undivided thing or rights belongs to different persons. According to Article 485 of the Civil Code, the shares of the co-owners in the benefits as well as in the charges shall be proportional to their respective interests. Any stipulation in a contract to the contrary shall be void. The portions belonging to the co-owners in the co-ownership shall be presumed equal unless the contrary is proved and each co-owner may use the thing owned in common, provided he does so in accordance with the purpose for which it is intended and in such a way as not to injure the interest of the co-ownership or prevent the other co-owners from using it according to their right. How partition is made in co-ownership? Partition may be made by agreement between the parties or by judicial proceedings. Partition shall be governed by the rules of court in so far as they are consistent with this code. According to Article 499 of the Civil Code, the partition of a thing own in common shall not prejudice third persons, who shall retain the rights of mortgage, servitude, or any other real rights belonging them before the division was made. Personal rights pertaining to third person against the co-ownership shall also remain in force, notwithstanding the partition. Upon partition, there shall be a mutual accounting for benefits received and reimbursements of expenses made. Likewise, each co-owner shall pay for damages caused by reason of his negligence or fraud. Each co-owner shall, after partition, be liable for the facts of title and quality of the portion assigned to each of the other co-owners. What is succession? According to Article 774, succession is a mode of acquisition by virtue of which the property rights and obligation to the extent of the value of the inheritance of a person are transmitted through his death to another or other either by his will or by operation of law. Descendant is the general term applied to the person whose property is transmitted through succession whether or not he left a will. If he left a will, he also called a testator. The inheritance includes the property, rights, and obligation of a person which are not extinguished by his death. The right to the succession are transmitted from the moment of the death of the descendant. Succession may be testamentary, legal, or in state, and lastly, it can be mixed. 
What are the ways in which succession passes? Property inherited from a deceased relative is subject to very strict under Philippine Civil Code. It indicates who may receive a property after a relative dies. According to Chapter 1, Article Number 778, succession may be passed in three ways, which are the testamentary, legal or in intestate, and mixed. The testamentary refers to the designation of here in a will in compliance with the law. Mixed succession in which partly by will and partly by operation of a law. While the legal or intestate occurs when a person dies without last will and testament, then his hears inherent by operation of a law. The legal or intestate hears are the legitimate and illegitimate children, ascendants and descendants, surviving spouse, and other collateral fifth civil degree and the state. Now let us talk about how will is made. First, let us know what is the will and statement. It is simply referred to as a will. This refers to the document that legally facilitates the distribution of a person state upon their death. According to Article 804 of the Civil Code, every will must be in writing and executed in a language or dialect known to the testator. It is important to know how to make a last will and statement, whether to choose a notarial will or a holographic will. How to undertake a probate of will. Now, let me explain the difference between the two. The holographic will is written, dated, and signed entirely by the hand of the testator. As such, these are more straightforward to execute compared to notarial wills. While the notarial will is a notarized document and it must be signed and sworn to by the testator himself or signed for him by a person in his presence at his express direction and also signed and sworn to by three or more credible witnesses all in each other's presence. Now, let us talk about how will it be valid. A Philippine will is a legal document that permits a person to control the distribution of his estate after his death in line with Philippine law. A will is a physical document which must follow certain formalities. A valid Philippine will must always be in written form. The will must be either executed, signed, and sworn to by the testator and three witnesses before a notary, that is a notarial will. While the holographic will, it must be entirely handwritten, it must be dated and signed by the testator. What is taxation in tourism industry? Let's first talk about tax. In order to pay for goods, services, and activities, a tax which are charges or payments that must be mandatory collected from individuals and corporations by local, state, and national governments. Taxation means a process of increasing the revenue under the authority of the law and it is the collection of the share of individual and organizational income by the government. This is to collect payments for the expenditures like education, health, infrastructures, and also for the welfare and protection of the citizen. According to World Tourism Organization, tourism taxes defined as taxes that are applicable specifically to tourists and the tourism industry or, alternatively, if not specific to the tourism industry, those which are applied differently in rival destinations. This is also to consider tourism taxation as those indirect taxes, charges affecting tourism-related activities. This include general taxes like import duties, sales taxes or value-added tax and also specific taxes under tourism-related activities such as hotels, travel agencies, restaurant taxes, airport taxes, visa fees, arrival and departure taxes. How does taxation affect the tourism industry? Taxation affects the tourism both positively and negatively since tourism is one of the most important in the country's economy. Having the best tax rate, 
that would help in the tourism development since there will be an increase in income. The taxes have an important role in funding the development and maintenance of the tourism facilities and infrastructure to enhance the country's competitiveness as a major tourist destination. On the other hand, tax have a negative impact where if the taxes increase, the travel destination prices will bump up, causing tourists to back out or avoid that destination. Now we get to functions of taxation. It is the ability of the sovereign to impose costs or charges on people or property rights in order to use and support government and carry out its duties. But why do we have to pay for tax? Number one, it helps the country's development. Your contributions fund the construction of public hospitals, mass transit systems, classrooms, and other facilities that will improve the Philippines' ability to travel, learn, conduct business, and access healthcare. Number two is income security. Applications for credit cards and personal loans must be accompanied by the income tax return or as we know as IPR which serve as the borrower's evidence of income. Your likelihood of being approved for a credit card or loan increases if you have this crucial financial document. The third one and last one is the uh, prevention from tax evasion. In our country, failing to pay taxes is against the law and carries severe financial penalties. We must know that it is illegal to try to avoid paying taxes or avoid paying taxes at all. Now we answer the question, what is the important economic impact of taxation of tourism? Tourism taxes have great significant effect on the GDP, investment, price level, consumption, trade balance, and other economic indicators. Tax systems can increase the distribution of income and generate revenue through levies or fees. However, a reduction in the tax rate on tourism as a value-added tax would increase competition and produce significant income in the tourism sector because a reduction in the tax rate would result in an increase in the number of visitors and the profit generated from visitors will make up for the deduction of taxes. What is travel tax? The travel tax is a levy imposed by the Philippine government on individuals who are leaving the country irrespective of the place where the air ticket is issued and the form of place of payment as provided by Presidential Decree 1183 as amended. Pursuant to Section 73 of Republic Act No. 9593, 50% of the proceeds from travel tax collections shall accrue to the TIESA, 40% shall accrue to the Commission on Higher Education for tourism-related educational programs and courses, and 10% shall accrue to the National Commission for Culture and Arts. How much is the travel tax? Taxable individuals may be charged the full travel tax, the standard reduced travel tax, and the privileged reduced travel tax. Who pays the full travel tax? The citizens of the Philippines, taxable foreign passport holders, non-immigrant foreign passport holders who have stayed in the Philippines for more than one year. Here are the requirements. Original passport and airline ticket. The full travel tax rates are as follows. For the class passage, the rate is 2,700 pesos and for the economy class, passage is 1,620. Travel tax exemption. Who may be exempted from paying the travel tax? These are the following Filipino citizens are exempted from the payment of travel tax pursuant to Section 2 of PD-1183. First, we have the overseas Filipino workers. Second, Filipino permanent residents abroad who stays in the Philippines in less than one year. And lastly, infants, two years and below. Also, there are other individuals qualified to avail of exemption. Foreign, diplomatic, and consular officials and members of their staff, official, consultants, experts, and employees of the United Nations Organization and its agencies, United States military personnel including dependents, and other U.S. nationals with fair speed for by the U.S. government or on U.S. government-owned or chartered transport facilities, crew members of airplanes flying international routes, Philippine Foreign Service personnel officially assigned abroad and their dependents, officials and employees 
of the Philippine government traveling on official business, excluding government-owned and controlled corporations, guarantees of foreign government-funded trips, bonafide student with approved scholarship by appropriate government agency, personnel and their dependents of multinational companies with regional headquarters but not engaged in business in the Philippines. Those authorized by the President of the Republic of the Philippines for reason of national interest. As provided under RAC 768, Balikbayan who stays in the Philippines is less than one year. As provided under RA 676A, family members of former Filipinos company the latter. Tourists may be faced with a wide range of taxes. They may be required to pay an extra tax or an exit tax when visiting another country. They may be required to pay a carbon or noise tax as part of their air ticket. During their stay, travelers will be charged taxes in a variety of transactions, including hotel rooms, restaurant meals, souvenirs, vehicle rentals, and advertising mission to visitors to attractions. Tourist businesses such as hotels, travel agencies, and vehicle rental agencies are subject to the same businesses and property taxes on non-tourist businesses. One of the specific example of taxation for this is the rate and base of tax in Republic Act Number no. 842 of Section 108. It states that there shall be levied, assessed, and collected a value-added tax equivalent to 10% of gross receipt derived from the sale or exchange of services, including the use or lease of properties.